Hi and welcome to the DE Physical Education Flip Learning videos. Hi guys, so in this video we're going to go through our aerobic system. Um, hopefully you've seen the other two videos, if not I suggest you watch video one looking at the ATP PC system and video two looking at the lactic acid energy system. So straight away our aerobic system it's got that keyword aerobics this means that it includes oxygen straight off the bat you're going to know that it's going to take a while to get the oxygen involved so you can't use the system straight away it's also going to be a lot more complicated because it's got that oxygen involved uh, this system would kick in roughly about two minutes two and a half minutes after you start your exercise you've got your ATP PC system doing those 10 seconds you then got your lactic acid system going from 10 seconds up to about sort of two minutes uh, and then this system would then kick in for this you're going to need a lot of things you might have to raid your parents cupboard for this so for our glycogen I'm going to use Kit Kat chunkies for glucose it's going to be Kit Kat pruvic acid I'm going to use the gummy bears for our ATP, this is where it's slightly different to the other two videos, I've combined these and I'm going to use Smarties. So instead of having the adenine and then three phosphate molecules, I'm going to combine them all together as ATP and refer to them all as ATP using our Smarties to demonstrate them. We've got our cola bottles for our H2O, we've got grapes for our carbon dioxide, and for our hydrogen, again, I'm going to use three different things, sort of a purple uh, lace for our hydrogen, our red laces for our hydrogen ions, and our green laces for our hydrogen electrons. With this system, just take your time because it's three main stages. Uh, I will go through these as three different sheets, stage one, stage two, stage three. Just take your time and break it down. Obviously, pause and rewind as you need. There's lots of key words and quite a few of them are quite large. So take the time, break them down. How I did it when I was learning is I wrote it down as much as possible. But hopefully this video will help you out and it will break down how we practically demonstrate the chemical reactions during our aerobic energy system. If we're looking at our aerobic system to start off with, it's very similar, if not identical, to the lactic acid system. However, it can now use three different energy sources uh, instead of just glucose. Right? So glucose is always the preferred way, but it can also use fats and proteins to create that energy source. To start off with, our glucose, so represented here by our Kit Kat Chunky, our glucose will go through that, pro that process again of glycolysis, where it splits into two different areas. Right. This will then become, again, 2 ATP and our pruvic acid. So we've got 2 ATP and our pruvic acid. Right. So that's how that process would work, pretty much, in fact, identical to our lactic acid system Right. up to this point. Also, at the same time, what can happen is it can be created through fats. So the same process can be happened through fats. However, instead of it being glycolysis, this is something called beta oxidization. So the same process could happen with fats. It goes through beta oxidization, creates our glycogen, our pruvic acid, and then the rest of it is the same. Right? This can also go through proteins. So if it, if it uses proteins as its energy source, it goes through a process called gluconeogenesis. Right? So gluconeogenesis. This isn't something you have to know for A-level. However, if you're looking to move on to sports science at university, this is something that you'd go into. And if you're looking to go into a medical field, this is biochemical engineering when you start to look at this sort of stage. Right? Throughout this process of glycolysis, beta oxidation, and gluconeogenesis, phosphofruct kinase is one of the key enzymes that's helping within this process. Right? So phosphofruct kinase allows or helps aid the glycolysis process, allowing it to split into two things, or two sections creating that 2 ATP and creating our pruvic acid right so at this stage it's all pretty much the same if you remember from the lactic acid this didn't have any oxygen involved in it so our pruvic acid became lactic acid which is obviously harmful or fatiguing for the body however now because this is an aerobic system and oxygen is involved our pruvic acid instead of becoming lactic acid gets carried by coenzyme A or transported by coenzyme A to something called the Krebs cycle. Right? So it goes across to our Krebs cycle because there is oxygen present so that allows this to happen. What then happens within our Krebs cycle, right? so our pruvic acid comes into our Krebs cycle. This takes place in the mitochondria which is basically your body's power station or your, the main fuel or where the fuel is coming from for your body. Right? So our pruvic acid comes into our Krebs cycle. Within the Krebs cycle our pruvic acid gets turned into the following things. Right? So it gets turned into carbon dioxide, it gets turned into H2O, 
and it also gets turned into hydrogen. So as our proving acid comes in, it goes into the Krebs cycle, it then creates these three things. This process creates two further ATP. Right? So as the proving acid comes in, it creates these three things. So our carbon dioxide, our H2O, and our hydrogen. And this process creates two ATP. Right? So at this stage, we've got two from the first section, two from the second stage, so this section here. So we're up to four so far. So obviously so far it's created the most ATP out of any of our energy systems. Right? But what then happens is our hydrogen gets transported by something called the electron transport chain. And these are the hydrogen is carried by hydrogen carries. Right? So the hydrogen carries take the uh, hydrogen molecules to the electron transport chain. Right? So let's move this out of the way. When we get inside our electron transport chain, right, this happens within something called the critinase. This is a section of the mitochondria, and within this, our hydrogen, so our hydrogen gets carried by our hydrogen carriers, gets into this section here. Our hydrogen splits and becomes hydrogen ions and hydrogen electrons. Right? And both of these are charged with potential energy. This whole process cre creates an incredible 32 to 34 ATP. Right? So this process within the electron transport chain. So if you remember, we've got our 32 to 34 from this section. We've got two from the Krebs cycle section. And we've got two furthermore from our glycolysis or our beta oxidization or our glyconeogenesis sections. Right? So if we add all them together, this system is coming in at between 36 and 38 ATP. So obviously the advantage of this, straight away, more ATP can be produced. On average, 36 ATP molecules are being produced from their aerobic energy system. Also, one thing that we, hopefully you've noticed is that there is no fatiguing byproducts. There's lots of glycogen and triglyceride sores, so the hydrogen exercise and can last for a long time. Of water, if you've seen the hydrogen it, it takes three different to energy, the energy to resynthesize so right, exercise can go on for almost potentially endless. So you're looking at sort of two, three hours of energy that is being provided before uh, the energy will then start to dip. Some of the disadvantages of this, as you can see, it's very complicated. There's lots of moving parts. It also takes a while for the oxygen to become available. So if you think about it, your body goes through our three different energy sources, right? So it starts off with that ATP, those first 10 seconds. It then goes into our lactic acid. You're looking at about two minutes. And then we get to this stage, and this can then finally kick in where there's enough oxygen to become available to meet the demand. We need to make sure there's enough oxygen to meet the demand because this ensures glycogen and that the fatty acids are, can be broken down. So the processes like beta oxidation and glyconeogenesis wouldn't happen without oxygen. Whereas glycolysis obviously can happen, we need to make sure that there's oxygen present to allow those fatty acids to be completely broken down and used by our body. Another disadvantage is that fatty acid transportation to muscles is low and also requires 15% more oxygen to break down the glycogen. Therefore, your body's preferred energy source is always going to be those glucose or always going to be those glucose molecules but your body can use the fat and the protein but the disadvantage is that you need more oxygen to allow that to happen and again it takes a long time it's a very complicated process there's lots of different things going on hopefully you guys like this video and hopefully it helped cheers